Hi everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen. Today we're going to be looking at AP Psychology 4.5, Social Cognitive and Trait Theories of Personality, Part 2. There are two CED questions for this section of Unit 4, so we're going to do two separate videos. I'm going to do two separate videos. First uh, is already done, so you might find that on my channel. And now we're going to look at the second CED question. So as always, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who's already subscribed to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And if you haven't done that already, hit that subscribe button for me, please. And if you want to find the whole slideshow and the workbook that goes for the entire unit four, and I also have it for all units. You can find the link below. Okay, so let's get started. So on this slide, you're going to see all the key terms for 4.5 for both CD questions. So I usually do a separate video for those with the definition and real life examples to help you really be able to understand so that you can define and apply them on test day. The CD question we're going to look at and all the essential knowledge is explain how trait theories of personality define and assess personality. So just a little introduction to trait theories of personality. Trait theories define find personality through stable characteristics, traits, that influence behavior across situations. So here we're going to start with the big theory of personality. The big five theory identifies five core traits that make up personality. So we use an acronym to remember the five traits. We use the acronym OCEAN. So O for openness to experience, C for conscientiousness, E for extroversion, A for agreeableness, and N for neuroticism, which is emotional stability. So let's explore the big five personality traits, a widely accepted framework in psychology for understanding human personality. These traits describe different aspects of our behavior and tendencies, and everyone falls somewhere on a spectrum for each one. Let's break them down. We'll start with openness to experience. The definition is this trait reflects imagination, curiosity, and a willingness to explore new ideas and experiences. For example, someone high in openness might love traveling to new countries, trying unique foods, or immersing themselves in different cultures. On the other hand, someone low in openness might prefer routines in familiar environments. The second one we're going to look at is conscientiousness. The definition is, this trait measures how organized, responsible, and dependable a person is. For example, a conscientious person meets deadlines, plans tasks effectively, and keeps their workspace tidy. Someone low in conscientiousness might procrastinate or struggle with organization. Next, we're going to look at extroversion. The definition is this trait involves your ability to socialize, your energy levels, and your assertiveness. For example, a highly extroverted person thrives in group conversations, enjoys parties, and feels energized by social interaction. In contrast, an introverted person might prefer quiet, solitary activities and kind of feel drained after being in a large social gathering. Number four, or the fourth one, is agreeableness. So the definition is this trait reflects kindness, cooperation, and empathy. For example, someone high in agreeableness might volunteer to help a friend in need or resolve conflicts peacefully. A person lower in agreeableness might be more competitive or less sympathetic in interactions. The fifth one is neuroticism. This is in emotional stability. The definition is this trait measures emotional stability and how often a person experiences negative emotions. For example, someone high in neuroticism might frequently feel anxious or stressed, while someone low in neuroticism might tend to be calm and emotionally resilient under pressure. The big five traits, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism provide a comprehensive way to describe personality. They're measured on a continuum and no single combination is inherently good or bad. So understanding these traits can help us better understand ourselves and others. Trait theories of personality focus on identifying and measuring consistent patterns of behavior and thought. To assess these traits, psychologists use two main methods, personality inventories and factor analysis. We'll break both down. So we'll start with personality inventories. What are they? These are structured questionnaires designed to measure personality traits, including the big five. These inventories ask individuals to respond to statements or questions about their typical behavior, feelings, or attitudes. So how do they work? So participants will rate their agreement with statements on a scale such as, I enjoy social gatherings, or I often feel stressed. And some examples of these would be the Neo Personality Inventory, which is a widely used tool to assess the Big Five traits, or the Big Five Inventory, a simpler questionnaire for measuring these traits. And why are they effective? Well, these inventories provide quantifiable data that psychologists can use to analyze personality. Next, we're going to look at factor analysis. What is that? 
That's a statistical technique used to identify patterns in responses and then group the related traits together. So how does this work? Psychologists analyze responses from the personality questionnaires and the traits that are highly correlated, such as organization and punctuality are grouped together into a broader category like conscientiousness. So for example, a person's response indicates they enjoy creative activities and seek new experiences. Well, that would fall under openness to experience trait. So the purpose is that factor analysis simplifies the vast array of personality traits into smaller number or broader categories like the big five. So trait theories rely on personality inventory to gather structured data and use factor analysis to group related traits into overachieving, overachieving dimensions. And together, these methods provide a reliable way to measure personality and then understand individual differences. Trait theories, especially the big five model, are widely used to understand personality. But like any theory, they have strengths and weaknesses. Let's explore both. We'll start with the advantages of trait theories. We'll start with simplicity. Trait theories provides a clear and straightforward framework for understanding personality by categorizing it into measurable traits. For example, the big five traits, openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. This offers an easy to use structure for psychologists and researchers. The second one is universality. The big five traits have been found to be consistent across cultures and age groups, making them a universal way to study personality. For example, studies show that people in different countries exhibit similar patterns or traits, such as high conscientiousness being linked to high academic success. The last one is predictive value. Traits can help predict behaviors and preferences, providing practical insights. So for example, high extroversion might predict career success in social professions such as sales or teaching, while high ag agreeableness might indicate strong relationships and compatibility. Now we're going to look at the criticisms of trait theories. We're going to start with lax depth. Trait theories focus on identifying what traits people have, but they don't explain why those traits develop or how they interact with underlying motivations. So for example, a person may score high on neuroticism, but the theory doesn't really explore whether it comes from childhood experiences or genetic factors. The second one is it underestimates situational influence. Trait theory emphasizes stable traits and may overlook how behaviors change in response to specific situation. For example, a typical person who would be introverted might be really extroverted at a family gathering or at a job interview, showing that context matters. The last one is overgeneralization. By reducing personality into five broad traits, the theory can oversimplify the complexity of human behavior and individual differences. For example, you might have two people with high openness, but they might differ significantly in how that trait manifests. One may enjoy traveling while the other one prefers reading about new ideas. So trait theories are valuable for their simplicity, cross-cultural consistency, and ability to predict behavior. However, they face criticism for lacking depth, under, underestimating situational influence, and over, over sort of generalizing complex personalities. While useful, they're most effective when combined with other theories that explore the why behind the personality. Trait theories of personality are highly practical and applied across various fields, such as education, in the workplace, and mental health. Let's explore how understanding personality traits can be used in real world settings. We'll start with education. So in education, teachers can use knowledge of personality traits to create effective learning environments and strategies tailored to individual students. So for example, a conscientious student thrives with structured schedules and clear deadlines. A student in high openness might benefit from creative assignments or special projects like research-based tasks. So the benefit is that by understanding traits, teachers can better engage students and foster academic success. So now let's look at the workplace. So employers can assess personality traits to match candidates with roles that suit their strengths. And this will help build effective teams and and improve job satisfaction. So for example, someone who has the trait of extroversion. Ideal roles for this person would be high social interactions like sales or customer service. Someone who's high in conscientiousness, their jobs will be critical and needing that need attention to detail, such as accounting or project management. So the benefit here is that hiring based on traits increases productivity and employee fit within the company's culture. And lastly, let's look at how it's applied in mental health. Therapists use personality inventories like the Neo Personality Inventory to understand clients' traits and how they influence behaviors, thoughts, and emotions. So for example, high neuroticism might indicate susceptibility to anxiety or depression, and that helps therapists develop personalized treatment plans. High agreeableness could indicate a client's strong capacity for collaboration in group therapy settings. So the benefit is that insights into personality traits help therapists provide targeted and effective interventions. 
intentions. So let's summarize. Trade theories are widely applicable. In education, they enhance teaching strategies. In the workplace, they guide hiring and team building. And in mental health, they inform, pers they inform personalized treatment plans. So understanding personality traits allows professionals to improve outcomes by leveraging individual strengths and addressing, and addressing challenges. Let's summarize what we've learned from the second CD question of 4.5, social cognitive and trait theories of personality. The key concepts we looked at were that trait theories define personality through stable traits like the big five. Personality inventories and factor analysis assess these traits. And traits predict behavior but not fully explain situational variability. So what's our takeaway? Trait theories offer valuable insights for understanding personality but should be used alongside other perspectives for a complete picture. So that's all the essential knowledge you need to know for 4.5, the second CED question, which was explain how trait theories of personality define and assess personality. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you did hit the like button, please. And if you want to find the workbook and full uh, slideshow for this video and all my videos from unit one to five, you can find the links below to my teacher pay teacher search where you can find everything from the key term videos to the slideshow videos to the teacher notes, anything you need to make your learning even better. So please, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I appreciate it if you do. And thank you for listening. See you next time.